Welcome to this introductory ATEZ tutorial video. We will be going over how to start ATEZ, create a project, create test code, and finally run a test program. Before we get started, I would like to briefly introduce the ATEZ test executive and integrated development environment suite. The ATEZ integrated development environment allows users to quickly develop automated test programs using a wide variety of hardware and software assets including PXI, PCI, and GPIB, as well as LabVIEW, C++, and .NET. ATEZ facilitates rapid application development in the Visual Basic style, but it's greatly focused on test development. To this end, ATEZ has many built-in structures that are object-oriented and allow developers to focus on building their tests without having to worry about certain detailed implementations such as log reporting and pass-fail analysis. The ATEZ test executive provides a highly intuitive graphical user interface for executing your ATEZ test programs. The built-in test executive gives the developer a ready-to-use graphical user interface that adapts to test environments that it is linked to. The ATEZ test executive frees the test developer from another detailed implementation that he or she would typically need to develop from scratch when using other test platforms. Now that I've introduced you to what ATEZ is, we will move on to actually developing a simple test program that controls a power supply, matrix switch guard, and GPIB DMM to take voltage readings. The first thing I'm going to do is double click the ATEZ 7.0 shortcut on the desktop to start ATEZ. Okay, this is the startup dialog box. So for this demonstration, I'm going to select project to create a new empty project in my workspace. Now if I expand the project module, I'll see there's a section for programs and system. So I'm going to need to first create a new program and right click on programs. I'll select new program. I can expand the programs folder out and the program module which is called program 1 in this example. Uh, within my program module I have a section for tests So the tests will contain all my test code to complete this demonstration and the task is a collection of tests. In this case uh, the default choices here are untitled task and untitled test which I can rename later on. I'm also going to need to talk to hardware. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a new system by right clicking on the system section and clicking on new system. And if I expand this tree node out I can see uh, the contents of my system module. Uh, you can see that there's a folder here called drivers. That's going to contain all the links to my hardware assets. In this case, I'm going to link in the GX7400 power supply, the GX6616 matrix switch card, and finally the HP GPAB DMM. So let's get started with that. I'll right click on drivers and select insert driver below scroll out to find the 7400 which is located here and click OK. So now you can see it inserted a link to my power supply driver. I can continue by right clicking and selecting insert driver after and now I can scroll to the GX6616 switch matrix and click open and it basically did the same thing and inserted a link to my matrix driver. The last thing I'm going to do is insert driver after and select the HP DMM which is located here, the HP 34401. Okay, now I've inserted all three instruments. I can go ahead and configure each instance. So I'll start with the power supply. I can right click on the power supply driver shortcut and select properties. Uh, now I'll get the properties dialog box and I can click the miscellaneous tab and configure the slot number. Now in this example the power supply is a GX7400 which is a PXI instrument so uh, it's addressed using slot numbers. I'll assign this instrument slot number 2. And I'll do the same thing with the matrix. Go to the properties page and it's also a PXI instrument, so I'm going to assign it to slot number 3. And finally, the DMM. If I go to the Properties page, I can s select the interface, which is GPIB in this uh, case, and enter 6 as my GPIB address. Uh, 
Okay, so now I've uh, inserted my drivers and configured all three. The next thing I need to do is create my first test. So the first thing uh, I'll do here is rename my test to 5 volt power supply test. And I can rename my task to power supply tests. So now I can get started on my test code. And the first thing I'm going to do is write some commands to configure my power supply. So to address my power supply, I'm going to type in PS, which is the same as the driver shortcut name here, and space, and then I'm going to select set current limit on channel 1 to 1 1.0 amps. Now you can see when I start entering a command, ATEasy will give some suggestions to complete that command. Now that's part of the ATEasy code completion feature, which is very useful. The next command I'll do is power supply set voltage on channel 1 to 5.0 volts. So now I've configured my power supply. I'm going to configure my switch matrix to close a relay. So I'll do matrix set channels a row A0 and column 5. Now I need to configure my DMM. So DMM set function volts DC and finally I can take my measurement so DMM measure and the parameter I'm going to pass to my DMM measure function will be test result now test result is a built-in ATEZ variable that stores the result after each test and the contents of test result is evaluated against certain parameters to determine pass fail criteria now I'm going to need to set the properties of my test so I can right click on my 5 volt power supply test and select properties and I can fill in the correct parameters for my test uh, in this case I'm going to leave the default choice of min max for test type I enter a value for my pin I enter volts for my units and select 4 volts uh, minimum and 6 volts maximum and finally a description for my test So now I've just created my first uh, ATEZ test, and I'm going to uh, take a little shortcut to do the second test. Since ATEZ is object oriented, I can actually treat this test as an object, and I can uh, right click on it and copy, and then select paste to essentially duplicate the test. And I can rename this to, let's say, 10 volt power supply test. I change my code as appropriate, so I'm going to change my power supply set voltage to 10.0 10 volt, to 10 .0 volts. I'm going to change my matrix command here to switch in a different column. And I'll also I'll uh, change the properties on my 10 volt power supply test to reflect a different pin and different uh, minimum and maximum parameters. So I'll do uh, 9 and 11 volts. And of course I can change the description here to 10 volt power supply test. So now I have two tests I can run in the integrated development environment by clicking start. Now what we have here is the uh, test log that was generated in HTML and so this gives you the test number test name, the pin, the units, the minimum, the result, the maximum, and the test status here. So you can see both uh, tests passed because they fell within the minimum maximum criteria. So the last thing I'm going to show you here is how to link in the test executive that I spoke about earlier. 
uh, into an ATC project. So the test executive is just another ATC driver which you can link in. So I'll, I'll just right click on my driver section and I can select insert driver after and scroll to test exec.drv click open so now I just linked in my test executive driver and if I click start uh, this time I'll get a fully functional graphical user interface here that automatically scans my test code and creates a little tree view here where I can select which tests I want to run so this test executive runs independently of the integrated test development environment so I click start and I get a similar log as before but now it's within a separate graphical user interface the ATEC test executive also provides several options for the test station operator such as program flow and graphical representation. As far as program flow is concerned, the test operator has several modes to choose from, including continuous mode, where the tests are run continuously from the beginning of the test program to the end, uh, task by task, where each task is run and then paused, and test by test, where each test is run and paused. For test by test mode, if I start it, you'll see it pauses on the first test, until the user chooses to continue to the next test. The test executive also allows the user to continuously loop a test. So for example, I can start the test executive and choose a loop test in continuous mode and then pause and abort the program the test executive can also be customized to use a touch screen interface. This can be done quite easily by going to Tools, Customize, Options, and you can select the modal touch panel. As you can see, the whole interface was changed to allow easier access from a touch screen. The interface can be switched back to the modeless view as well. This demonstrates the flexibility and power of using the ATZ Text Executive with your test programs. So this concludes the introductory ATZ video where I created a test program which used a power supply a matrix and a GPIB DMM to take a few readings and do some pass-fill analysis on them. I ran the test in ATEZ within the integrated test development environment and then I linked in the test executive so I could easily bring in the built-in graphical user interface to my project 